Hello and welcome to Downtime Fun. When talking about puzzles, most people will immediately think about jigsaw puzzles. To solve them, it is all about fitting the shapes together to make a beautiful picture. That's what I thought a year ago too. Since starting this channel last year, I stumbled upon the Hanyama Cast Puzzle series. I continue to drop deeper down the rabbit hole. The more I learned about them and discovered many wonderfully hidden gems within the puzzle world. In this video, I want to share what I found and hopefully you will find one or two which intrigues you. A crash course to mechanical puzzles, so to speak. This is going to be a fun one. Let's get into it, shall we? Okay, so at first I was only categorizing these puzzles into say metal puzzles like these ones and then the wooden puzzles like this one, the wooden star and the caged animal series. Afterwards I found some acrylic puzzles like this one, the paper fleet produced by Wood Wonders. And until recently, I have started to play around with the 3D printed puzzles like this excellent one by Andrew Crowell, the Sh Maniac Shuffle 2 and 3. But the more I look into the puzzling world, the more I realize how fast the puzzling world is. So in this video, I have marked the chapters so you can skip to different parts of the video if you want to. And they are arranged in alphabetical order in case you want to skip to the ones you are interested in. Starting with the letter A, we have the assembly puzzles. These are relatively easy to take apart, but the main goal for these puzzles are to put them back together again, which requires a lot more thought. The Hanyama cast loop and diamond are good examples of this category. The cast loop is designed by Fessa Timonen and it's the winner of the 2007 International Puzzle Party Jewelry First Prize and also Puzzler Award, whilst the diamond is designed by Scott Elliott. Both solutions are relatively easy to find and I think they are really really elegant. Overall they are very fun and usually require very few moves to solve it. The opposite of assembly puzzles are disassembly puzzles. As the name suggests, the whole goal is to take the puzzle apart and then put it back together again. That's why sometimes you will hear them to be referred as take apart puzzles. These usually require a lot more moves and for the more complicated puzzles, putting it back together will be just as difficult. Here I have the first aluminium cross puzzle by Will Strebos. This is an excellent fun puzzle which requires around 7 to 8 steps to disassemble it. It is more expensive but the quality and looks are a step up from the Hanayamas. However, the price doesn't necessarily mean it's better in terms of challenge or fun. That being said, this first aluminium cross is really really good fun and I highly recommend anyone who is interested in it. Talking about Hanayamas, this cast padlock puzzle by Jin Hu An is another award winning design in the 2014 International Puzzle Party and it is really good fun. The price is very reasonable, around 10 to 15 US dollars, but you get a lot of puzzling out of it. There are many many different disassembly puzzles out there. Some of them are really low cost, like the wire puzzles I have here, and I think this is a very good place to start with mechanical puzzles. Next up are dexterity puzzles. These are not necessarily difficult to figure out how to solve, but the main challenge lies with your hand-eye coordination. I don't have many puzzles of this category at the moment, but I will categorize this Hanayama UFO by Fessa Timonen as one of them. This is a very tricky one. I've also seen puzzles like this which is a good example of dexterity puzzles. These are good for pushing your hands and fingers to the limits and can also be good toys for younger children to develop their motor skills. Then there are things that seem very funky, sometimes weird and sometimes looking impossible. I categorize them as impossible objects. My example here is the cigar and whiskey bottle puzzle. 
There is a nut through the wooden pole which in turn is inside the bottleneck and seems impossible to be taken out. Technically these can be placed under disassembly puzzles but they look really awesome on display. Solving them also requires some level of dexterity given the limited movements allowed and these can be very frustrating but also very rewarding when it's complete. Now on to the big family of interlocking puzzles. This is very popular in terms of mechanical puzzle type and this is the burr puzzle. The strict definition of a burr puzzle is that they should be solved with movements along the three dimen dimensional axes and no rotations are required or allowed. I did not know that when I was solving this Gordian Snot puzzle by ThinkFun. Don't be fooled by this outlook of the commercially available Gordian Snot puzzle. This is actually pretty challenging and requires 69 moves to fully disassemble it. There are other examples like this wooden tricky drawers puzzle and also this 3D printed skeleton keys by Andrew Crowell. Some bird puzzles are notoriously difficult like the Excalibur puzzle designed by Stefan Baumiger and produced by Pelican. Another variation of the bird puzzle is the tick puzzle, turning interlocking cube puzzles. These are another movement to the solve which creates a whole new level of difficulty. I don't have a lot of them at the moment, but I'm still stumped by this fantastic puzzle by Andrew Crowell. These are great puzzles for anyone looking for a real good challenge. This next category can and should be dedicated to Dan Feldman from Israel. His creation, the Danlock on the right, has reached legendary status within the puzzle community. Before opening the Danlock, the other puzzle I have here is the Salen Schloss by Jean-Claude Constantin. This one is a wooden lock and looking like a combination lock. I found this very difficult and took me a very long time before I can solve it. The whole aim for the lock puzzles here are to open the lock and sounds straightforward enough, but in reality the puzzles are disguised in these lock shaped objects. For the Dan lock here, the puzzle is actually integrated into an actual padlock, which in my opinion is ingenious. The Danlock is currently selling at around $200, not cheap at all, but it has to be experienced to understand why this is such a highly regarded puzzle. Then there are the maze puzzles. The concept is relatively straightforward and is to move the item and escape from a series of mazes. I have here the Hanayama Labi, which is short for Liberant. The twist here is that there are two mazes, one on each side, and they have to be handled simultaneously. I've also ordered the inside puzzle cubes which I am still waiting to try out and will certainly make a video out of them when I solve it. The other maze puzzle I have here is the key, key 2 to be exact. It doesn't look like a maze at all and I won't spoil it for you here, I've made a video before but it is actually a maze in disguise. Solving these puzzles actually gives you a strong sense of achievement, so it is a very good feeling. Now onto my, one of my favorite puzzle type, the 2D packing puzzles. These are sort of similar to jigsaw puzzles I mentioned at the start of the video, but the really fun ones usually contain a clever twist, which makes me appreciate the designer's wit and genius. The goal is simple, to fit all the pieces into the frame, well, of course, it is not as straightforward as it sounds. Here, I have a few really good examples like the Nosy Puzzle by Alexander Holroyd here, which consists of nine colorful acrylic pieces. Then there is the Oleo 10 by Yuasaka, whom the designer is one of my favorites and his designs hooked me into the 2D packing world. Then there is the Ugly 4 by Jigsawholic, but I will not open it up now as I just realized it is in the solved state. And finally, this is my most recent puzzle purchase, the Mondrian Blocks, which is another IPP Jewelry First Prize winner in 2019. These are commercially available and I have just started playing with it. One of the reasons I really like this type of puzzle is because of the sense of satisfaction at the solved state 
where the really good designs tend to finish with a high note and fitting the last piece into the frame feels extra special. Try one of the USAKA's design and you will understand what I mean. Taking the 2D packing puzzles up another level and we will find the 3D packing puzzles. The goal is very similar which is to fit all the pieces into a 3D box. For example, this is one of my recent favourites, the Picnic Basket by Akaki. The goal here is to fit the three pieces into the 3D printed basket with a flat top. This particular pink one is the cake, which is an entry level puzzle in terms of difficulty. Akaki has designed more than 10 of these, all fitting into the same basket but with various levels of difficulty. The colour and fit is great and I will be making a few videos on these fun little puzzles. Not all 3D packing puzzles need to end with a flat top, some just require to fit everything into the box. Such as this one, a classic by Dr. Volker Latusek, The Casino, which is regarded as a great example of the 3D packing puzzles. My version here is produced by Rombo and it should still be available to purchase. And the whole goal is to fit all the six circular pieces into the box. Another great example is this one, Euclid for Kids, also by Dr. Volker Latusek. I have been trying to purchase this for a while and it has been out of stock for the longest time. I haven't solved this puzzle yet, as you can see, but I am very interested in the design with only three pieces and it looks so simple. But I am sure Dr. Volker Latusek has some trick up his sleeve and this will be a very challenging one. Similar to the 2D packing puzzles, the sense of satisfaction is immense when fitting the final piece into the box. Puzzle boxes are quite literally boxes with some tricky mechanism and the aim is to open them up. These here are assembled by myself and the work kits are produced by Kakuri Creation Group which produces top quality puzzle boxes. I feel that their works are leaning more towards the art side instead of puzzling side. Just take a look at their website and you will understand what I mean. Puzzle boxes seem to be quite popular in Japan as a traditional Japanese specialty, especially in Hakone. Yet there are also many excellent puzzle boxes makers around the world. Here I have an excellent example made in the US by the master craftsman Eric Fuller, the topless box. This one has tricked me for a very very long time but I have finally opened it last week. I will do a full video on this excellent box and I will not go into details of this puzzle now. Puzzle boxes are usually made out of wood and for the high-end boxes they will be using really nice woods which will require proper storage and handling to make sure the humidity and temperature will not affect the mechanism. Just want to point it out as this is worth noting if you are thinking of getting some nice puzzle boxes. Sequential Discovery Puzzles As the name suggests, these puzzles will require step-by-step -step exploration and finding tools to help you along the way. To reach the final goal of the puzzle, be it taking it apart, answering a question or finding a prize within the puzzle. Escape Room Puzzles are a type of sequential discovery and recently there are a few escape room puzzles on Kickstarter which created a buzz in the community. The Box 1 puzzle by Neil Patrick Harris I'm showing here is surprising and it's also a sequential discovery puzzle. I must say I didn't expect how the puzzle turned out to be and I really had fun throughout the journey. I cannot show you the contents of the box as it will spoil the whole puzzle for you. Uh, I got this from Theory11 website and this is highly recommended for some surprising puzzling experience. And the last category that I'm going to cover in this video is the sequential movement puzzles. For this it is really a logic puzzle which requires clear thinking to figure out which steps to be taken when. A good example is the popular Rush Hour series by ThinkFun. It is actually designed by the legendary Nob Yoshikahara. I have finished the deluxe version of this puzzle and it is very enjoyable. I have made a short review video on this puzzle and I will put a link up on the top right for anyone interested. Wow, so this turned out to be quite a long video on puzzles. Obviously I am no expert on puzzles but I try to summarize my understanding of the main types of puzzle here. 
Hopefully you will find this useful. I will be extra happy if you can find some puzzles that interests you and pique your interest to find out more. If you have any questions on any puzzles or you want to discuss anything, just leave a comment below and I will try to respond as soon as possible. I have left all the links in the description below for the puzzles that I've mentioned in this video. Anyway, that is about it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button and also subscribe to my channel. It will mean a lot to me. In the meantime, take care and I will see you in the next video.